Good morning and welcome to a miserable winter's morning. It's um, after a lovely couple of days, absolutely chucking it down today. Um, so today uh, I'm back in my Mazda and the reason that is is because it's, um, it's due its MOT today. So if you live outside the UK, you're not sure, it's the um, test that any car that is over three years old in the UK has to go through every year um, in order to get a certificate to say it's uh, fit to go on the road. So um, that's due today uh, on this car. So I'm going to take it in. Um, you know, this this is my old workhorse. I've had this car years and years and years. I've spoken about it before. It's done over a hundred thousand miles. Um, I do kind of minimal maintenance on it really. Um, it gets serviced and MOT'd once a year. Uh, it has always run perfectly. So um, I'm hoping that again today it'll get through its MOT. Um, I've I've tried to help it on its way a little bit by um, giving it a good clean yesterday. Not that it's going to make any difference today with this weather, but um, yeah, I think if you take your car in looking like you care for it and you look after it, then hopefully if there is anything that's a bit borderline, um, you know, they might just kind of give you the benefit of the doubt. Uh, you know, when you've got a car this old, as far as I'm concerned, every little helps. So, um, so it had a good clean yesterday. Um, but what it does, this kind of nicely leads me on to what I want to talk about today, and that is the internal combustion engine and um, what the future holds for it. Well, it's all dropped off now uh, we'll just wait and see how it gets on uh, and I'll get a nice walk back through the forest albeit I don't know that I've quite got the appropriate footwear on to be stomping through here this morning where it's all wet uh, and I do worry a bit about um, those little independent garages like that they've been around forever they haven't really changed their model forever uh, and it's worked very well but um, I was talking to a friend actually a few weeks ago who is a mechanic and he applied for a job in a new garage uh, and they said part of the terms of employment would be that you'd have to do an EV specific course for mechanics. So um, they're kind of, I guess there is an acceptance now that uh, it's coming uh, and if they don't keep up, then they're gonna get left behind. Uh, and there's obviously these courses are being produced for people. So um, hopefully these little independents that we've all come to sort of love and rely on, especially those of us that generally buy secondhand cars, um, hopefully they'll keep going and we'll be able to keep using them as we have been. But um, I'm not far from home now and uh, the plan this afternoon was that I was going to uh, take a bush out the front of um, my garden so that I could get ready to lay a, a platform to put a, a new wood store on. But I'll be honest, with this weather, I'm thinking I might just go and get myself a cup of coffee and eat some, um, some birthday cake, which actually I've cut early. It's my birthday tomorrow, but uh, we were all home last night, so we cut the cake and uh, very nice it is too. So um, I'm thinking I might just go home and do that for a few hours. <laughs> I mean, look at it. You're telling me you wouldn't sit down and eat that all day today. At least sitting down here eating this and drinking coffee gives me a chance to properly have a chat with you about uh, the internal combustion engine and uh, where we are with it. Because I think I, like most other people who have now driven EVs for quite a period of time, see it as quite an antiquated piece of um, machinery. It, it feels very old fashioned. Everything about it is old fashioned um, from uh, the noise it makes and the vibration to having to put fuel in and petrol stations. And for me, I thought, well, we're coming to the end of it. They are drawing to the natural conclusion. Uh, the end of their life is coming. And uh, as soon as there is sufficient range at a good price for um, batteries, then we will all naturally just switch to EVs. Well, it, it seems like not all manufacturers are wanting to follow the script. Now, there's going to be lots of reasons for that. But um, the one that really caught my eye this week is Nissan. Uh, Nissan are still actively developing new internal combustion engines. Now, they're, they're talking about them being ultra efficient. They've got a whole division of their, um, uh, their company devoted just to making these new engines. Uh, and by making them ultra efficient, they're saying they're, they're more environmentally friendly and actually they could challenge EVs, which I find a really interesting stance for a company like Nissan to take, who definitely are at the forefront of promoting EVs. 
But then when you take a step back, you have to remember that for the likes of me and other people that have um, adopted a, an EV quite early on, it's very easy to get caught up in that world and to think that there is nothing outside of it. Uh, we are still a minority. The EV market is still a niche market. And there is still, you know, the vast majority of people are still buying petrol and diesel cars. And also you've got to look back to the, the research and development that goes into anything to do with a car isn't quick. So, yeah, we're probably looking several years ago, they started funding and researching the engines that are being produced now. Well, several years ago, I don't think anyone could have predicted how quickly the growth in EVs would be. So they have now spent an awful lot of money, and it's not just Nissan, all manufacturers, spent an awful lot of money produce, producing ultra-efficient, ultra-reliable engines. They now need to sell them to get some money back. So, of course, they're going to keep pushing them, and of course, they're going to keep looking at ways to uh, introduce them into vehicles, whether that be a full ICE car or a hybrid. Now, the big thing that they're all talking about at the moment is um, the percentage, the thermal percentage. Now, the thermal percentage is uh, how much, basically, how much energy can they pull from one unit of fuel? Now, uh, Nissan are talking about this one that they've just produced being 30% thermal efficient. Uh, Toyota are talking about 40% thermal efficiency on their latest engine. Uh, the kind of the holy grail at the moment seems to be 50%. It does seem to be a race to see who can get the most thermal efficient engine at the moment. Personally speaking, I see it as being short-lived as far as a full ICE engine is concerned. Um, but from a hybrid point of view, if you scale that down and make it a small engine with this um, new technology, and it's all to do with software and how it um, adjusts itself to get the, you know, whatever uh, state the engine is in, however many revs it's using, whatever temperature it's at, um, making itself the most efficient it possibly can. Um, you scale that down to a small engine, like a Rex or um, just a hybrid, then perhaps that's quite a good option. But um, as for its full life, you know, again, we just have to look back to this um, Tesla Roadster. You know, as far as they're concerned, that car can do 600 miles uh, on one charge. Completely out of the price range of the vast majority of us at the moment. But you know, batteries like computers, uh, like any technology, the price is tumbling so quickly. So I don't think it's going to be that many years before we see that technology and that sort of range in affordable cars. Uh, so I think, as far as uh, a pure internal combustion engine is concerned, I think its years are short now. Uh, it's just a case of getting that battery and that technology in an affordable package. I've just spoken to the garage and um, the car isn't ready yet, which is a bit of a problem because uh, the kids need picking up from school soon. Uh, apparently they're waiting for an oil filter, as if they didn't know that they were getting my car in to change the oil. Um, anyway, thankfully my um, in-laws are in. I'm gonna run up to their house and borrow one of their cars to go and get the kids from school and then we'll work out how I'm gonna get the other car later. But for now, it's all turned into a bit of a rush again. Alexa, turn off all lights. So um, hopefully I can get across to the garage later, but I'll probably have to take the kids with me. Well, I wasn't expecting to be driving a Fiesta today, uh, but um, thank goodness for in-laws. Once again, they have, uh, they've bailed us out and uh, there's no way I could have got the kids without being able to pop around there and borrow this car. Albeit, this has got a gear stick and uh, I haven't driven a car with a gear stick for a long, long time. Uh, and it is bringing back memories. Here we go, we're in this car. We've got grandma's car. <laughs> oh, sorry, Thomas. Thomas, shut the door. There we go, all done. A uh, couple of little advisories, nothing really too much, and um, £130 lighter now. Um, I think £39 of that was for the MOT, the rest was for just oil and labour. Um, and the, oh, oh, in fact, they changed a side light as well. I didn't realise it was out. But um, so that's been done. So I now have uh, an MOT that sets me up for another year on this car. Now I have to go and try and find the children. Um, <laughs> on route there, I picked up my father-in-law so we could shuttle the cars around. And um, he drove off with the kids in the car. So I'm not sure if he's gone back to my house or back to his house. But one way or the other, I need to find my children and get some dinner. <laughs> There we go, I managed to find them, they're safe and well. Um, 
in their favorite position at the end of a school day. So that brings today's vlog to an end. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, remember to uh, like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at EV Opinion. And I'll see you again next time. Take care, bye-bye.